Welcome to Goa. For any tourist who's been traveling for a while, Goa is the jewel. It's a place to lie back and relax after putting up with the hardships of travel. Goa is situated on the west coast of India, about halfway. The tourist literature raves about Goa. 3,000 square kilometers, it was once the pride of Portugal's Eastern Empire. It's now a haven for holiday makers. Unlike the rest of India, it's still mainly Roman Catholic. Annabel de Costa wrote this in 1999. The azure seas of Goa yield a variety of fresh tasty seafood and fish. With a pleasant climate and diverse flora and fauna, Goa is a heaven of peace and a mixed mixture of laziness and nonchalance, a mixture of the past and the future, where beautiful palm fringed beaches glitter on its shores. This map of Goa shows a few of the many beaches and also the capital city, Panjim. The major transportation route A satellite photograph showing the location. This aerial photograph shows the capital city, Panjim. There's many interesting websites devoted to Goa. Here's a panoramic view of some of the highlights. There's a lot of travel magazines promoting Goa as well. Goa was a colony of Portugal, and we'll take a look at some of the early 16th century maps of the area. This drawing was done in 1509, and it shows the defensive structure across the harbor and the walled town. Here you can see the uh, booms across the harbor to stop ships from entering. Even by 1509, it was well developed with the walled city and defensive structures. It's amazing that so little remains today. Another early engraving showing the harbor at Goa. This early drawing outlines the uh, street. A map of the capital Panjim today. Not much left of the original medieval structure of Goa. A few stones remain, that's all of 
the third defensive structure. Many of the old Portuguese churches and a few of the old Portuguese houses still survive. I wouldn't want to tackle these stairs in a wheelchair. One of Goa's cathedrals. A small chapel in Tanzim. A modern church in Goa. Looking on eBay, the first thing I noticed was uh, 250 trance musical CDs for sale under Goa. I learned that Goa has a local musical genre near to trance music and is famous worldwide. A special festival in Goa celebrating the psychedelic or trance music. Go is visited by hundreds of thousands of foreign tourists each year. It's one of the most popular holiday destinations for European travelers. This map lists the continuous string of beaches along Goa's coastline. I spent most of the time at Kelvingu and Ajuna beaches the more popular ones for tourists. We'll take a look at the beaches. There are many small hotels cafes and restaurants almost on the beach. You can sit and enjoy a kingfisher beer and listen to the surf. It's a shame that Goa comes burdened with the reputation for loose living because there's so much more to it than sun, sand, and psychedelia. The other Goa is that it remains quite distinct from the rest of India and is small enough to be grasped and explored in a way that other Indian states are not. It's not unusual to see cows on the beach. A carving of Shiva head done in the rock on Little Brigator Beach. It's possible to rent accommodation almost on the beach. A typical house in Goa done up in the early Portuguese style. A great feature of Goa is its many restaurants. While you're there, you can eat fresh seafood every day. Catch of the day. Lots of food and drink and even cocktails and it's all pretty reasonably priced. If you're not partial to seafood, you can have anything you want, really. Here's the steakhouse. You can eat almost on the beach.
We'll finish up by a quick glance at one of the markets. A range of spices for sale. Thank you for joining me on this trip to Goa. I do hope you have a good day.